Welcome to Find Africa Television. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. On today's program, we're featuring Taibu Community Health Center, a multidisciplinary nonprofit organization established to address health disparities and barriers affecting the African Canadian community using the social determinants of health. Taibu derived its name from the Kiswahili word, which means be in good health. Taibu was um, developed as a concept by an organization called the Black Health Alliance. It took a long while and uh, quite a lot of challenges, but in 2005, uh, the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, uh, as part of the expansion of primary care and uh, community health centers in Ontario, uh, announced the establishment of Taibu. And Taibu is the only one that has a specific mandate to serve uh, the African and Caribbean population across the province. Uh, and then in 2008, that report was approved by the ministry with allocated resources and budget for, for that program. And so Taibu has been in existence since 2008. We are representing a high proportion of rates in cardiovascular illness, also around sexual health, um, as it relates in particular to HIV and AIDS, and also in terms of research that's not being done on our community by us, about us, and for us. Uh, the ability to influence policy and effect change. So to have a community health center, also to look at the systemic issues that impact on the health of the black community, and in particular, racism as one of the social determinants of health. In my role, one of the things that we do, we look at the designing of programs, implementation of programs. So all the programs that are designed are based on needs assessment that are coordinated within the community and based on the feedback that we have received, we design the programs to meet those needs. Also, we are looking at trends, community trends, and we operate from the social determinants of health. We work with the clients to be able to manage their health and to create a climatic conditions within the community that helps them to support the new lifestyles that they have to adjust to. Utilizing a community village model in the way that we work, we have an overall strategy where we are looking at um, a health transformation uh, model, which involves community participation. I've been coming here maybe two years now because I see the foot doctor because, I, because I'm diabetic. Once a month they do cooking, exchange recipes, um, there's an exercise class going. The participants within the program, they um, pull together, we bring our health food, we have some grapes here, we have our bean salad, vegetable salad or bananas, our cultural food. So what we do, we encourage participants to have um, their own meal. We encourage all our older adults here to eat healthy, more vegetables and less fatty food. And today is a very typical example of what we have taught them. You could see from our selection here, that's what we have taught them to do. And uh, we could see that with their exercise and their healthy eating habits. So that's one of our accomplishments here. And uh, I'm happy to say that um, our older adults, they too, they have change their diets to accommodate what they have learned. We have a dietitian that teaches us how to eat. When I started, I did not know how to eat proper. But with their help and their patience, I learned to eat and enjoy it very much. My blood sugar just keep going up and down. But after coming here with, with Taibu, meeting the nutritionist, it helped me to eat properly and then the nurse where they would like tell me what to do and how to do things. This is our instructor Eva here from our um, salsa and light dancing program. I found a social worker was very helpful. I got my med alert tie. She helped me to get my insulin needles. She introduced me to the dentist. I think I was the first patient for the dentist. I get my feet, toes cut. So I enjoyed it so much, I brought everybody. And everybody that I know from church or the community, I invited them to come to Titus. Yeah, 
As long as you're walking fast enough that your heart rate goes up and you're sweating, then you're definitely going to see a difference in, you know, in your blood sugar, in your blood pressure, right? Planet Africa Television will be right back. Welcome back. Taibo Community Health Center provides primary health care services, health promotion programs, and community development initiatives. Community health centers have a very interesting model of uh, care. They go beyond the physical aspect of uh, individual uh, issues, and they look at the broader social determinants of health, which includes um, racism, employment, education, social uh, networks. You know, it's different from any kind of medical clinic where you go and see your primary physician. Uh, they will see you for your medical problems, they'll prescribe medication, and that's the end of the story. But here we have an interdisciplinary team, including physicians, nurses, and other allied health uh, professionals. But more importantly, we have uh, a wide range of health promotion and illness prevention uh, programs. The most significant achievement Taibu has is that it's in the heart of a community that was involved in how we structured our programs and services. So this is like, this is kind of like the big home of all the people who live in the GTA who are of African descent and, and then the smaller home of the people here in Malvern. And I think that's a huge uh, piece for our community. It's a place that people could call their own. There are a lot of health disparities and health inequalities uh, among the African and Caribbean population. Uh, just a few examples, the black population is at greater risk of developing diabetes and hypertension, like two to three times at greater risk of developing these chronic conditions as compared to other communities. Um, mental health is a very prevalent and chronic condition in the community. And we also know that a lot of the black population is not being served by mainstream organization because of you know, different ba barriers. Uh, it could be a cultural barrier, it could be linguistic barriers, but more importantly, uh, systemic barriers that include racism and other historical issues. Our clientele, we serve children, youth, adults, and older adults. Older adults programs are designed to um, first engage them through a self-help model. So we have a men's program, a women's program. The women's program started with about 27 members and now it has grown to 117. And they meet on a weekly basis. What is so interesting is that the women's program has been so successful thus far that other health centers now are calling us and we are now getting the women to go and present at other health centers to talk about how they designed it, how they started, and how the program is um, impacting uh, their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. We have about 3,500 3, active clients registered with us to, to, as, as of today. Uh, that's a huge accomplishment. We have engaged quite a lot of people. Uh, and we have had successes in different programming services. Uh, one uh, very important achievement, uh, recent achievement, is uh, with regard to our sickle cell uh, initiative. And at Taibu, we have been able to engage the sickle cell community, which is a chronic condition affecting predominantly the black population, not necessarily exclusively. So we have been working with uh, the sickle cell network group here in, 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 in Toronto. Uh, so a couple of achievements we've done is we worked with the Scarborough Hospital to uh, implement uh, an emergency department protocol for adults with sickle cell disease. Typically, patients with sickle cell disease will tend to have pain in a single location or multiple locations on a recurrent basis. So we see some patients with sickle cell disease who have recurrent episodes of abdominal pain, others who have pain in their back, their hips, their knees, etc. Other manifestations include difficulty breathing. The sickling can occur in the lungs that prevents normal transfer of oxygen into the tissues and that can cause shortness of breath and can be life-threatening. Uh, patients with sickle cell disease are more prone to have things like strokes, heart attacks, kidney disease, because all of these organs are affected by the uh, sickling. And as patients age, these problems tend to accumulate. And so one of the focuses of our attention right now is to try to prevent not just the painful crisis, but try to prevent the ongoing sickling that gradually nibbles away at their various organs. 
The staff is great. Uh, Dr. Grossman has been a, a huge help uh, in his assistance in uh, dealing with, uh, with me and with the illness and uh, giving me all the advice and help that I need in order to, uh, to, to get through. Taibu Community Health Center has helped me manage sickle cell disease uh, in a way that we are, uh, we come together um, in a support group where we're able to um, commingle with other um, individuals that are um, living with the disease as well and also one, uh, with people that have questions and concerns because they could be family members as well. So it's helped me uh, understand that obviously I'm not the only one uh, living with the disease and that there are other people out there living with it but have other challenges as well. Hi everyone, my name is Julius. I'm the community health worker at Taibu. Welcome to the Sickle Cell Support Group. It's good to have you guys all here and I uh, would like to have a quick check-in, see how you guys are doing. So I'll start with you. So I'm doing pretty good right now. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, last visit wasn't too bad. Uh, I was at Brampton Civic Hospital and uh, the staff was great. They really put in a lot of care and gave me all the treatment that I needed. And um, I was actually out of there within about 72 hours. So it wasn't too bad, yeah. My last visit was last month. I was in hospital for about a week and a half. Uh, the crisis was very, very, very painful. Good. Today we're going to talk about relationship. And to start off, I have a quote here. Relationship with no trust is like a pencil with no lead. What does that invoke to you? That's deep. I'll start with you. <laughs> I think that's pointless. <laughs> that's, that's a good the relationship point. that's a good. is pointless. What about you? Um, I have no clue. <laughs> well, I've been coming here for um, three years now, and they always comfort me, have conversations, and um, they make me feel like, you know, a family. <laughs> it's given me a place to commingle with other people with sickle cell, so I'm a part of a larger community. Um, it's given me an opportunity to realize that I'm not as invisible as I originally had felt. Taibu has helped me because we have a great support system in place and with the lack of knowledge in the medical field, it is really good that all of us can come together and share our experiences and this way we're teaching one another even though we're at different levels in our illness. So where the doctors can't help us on that path, they have surely really come about being together with one-on-one, -on -one, sharing the experiences to let you know that you really help a person and that you're not alone in this. I believe that we deal with a lot of uh, health issues that um, we face that we don't necessarily have uh, the greatest answers to. And Malvert and Taibu allows um, individuals in the community to freely come to get any type of education they would require when dealing with health uh, issues and um, sensitive matters. Taibu staff is great. They're understanding, they're compassionate, and uh, they really strive to make a difference uh, in the community uh, with educating everyone on sickle cell disease. Planet Africa Television will be right back. Welcome back. To create more opportunities and facilitate active community engagement, Taibu Community Health Center established the Ubuntu Village Project. Ubuntu is an African concept of togetherness, which was made popular in South Africa. There will be thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands who will wait to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But with a bit, lift up your chin and a bit of a grin, and without any doubting or quitting, you just start to sing as you tackle that thing. And next thing you know, you will do it. And I am particularly excited on this occasion because I am really passionate about seniors, older adults, our elders. I find that most of my learning has come from what I have learned from being in their presence even as a child. And though you may not recognize how important this is to launch a village 
And as we launch this particular project, unique in its design and certainly a template for other communities, we encourage everyone here today to spread the news. We just want to say, as a board of directors, that we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your tenacity. We thank you for your support of this organization. This is your home. When we designed this place and built this place, this is what we expected to see. And it makes our hearts glad to come here now and to see just a small representation of who we are, yet significant. Thank you very much. Well, we all come from places where village is everything for us. It's the neighborhood, it's the community, it's the village that looks after each other. So this is where the spirit of the Ubuntu village concept started. And today is not the just start of the Ubuntu project, it's just acknowledging the journey that we have come so far in the last almost two years, but most importantly, where this thing is going to be going. And with so many of the programs that we've done here with the community, I am so much excited because the older adults are engaged, they are taking ownership, and they are deciding what should be done in the community. So and I'm so grateful for the people who are here on a daily basis and telling us what we should be doing. I really would like to acknowledge uh, the villagers, our board of directors for the support, uh, Ontario Freedom Foundation for the generous grant that they have given us. Of course, the support of our um, MPP um, and champion of Taibu, um, Honorable Baz Barkinson. This community health center created by the Ontario government uh, has certainly filled a void in our community to provide the services of good health care, especially health promotion so that we live longer and stronger and better. And this new initiative, which is to provide the seniors the opportunity to get out of their homes and go to their doctor's appointments and get out of their home and come to exercise programs and recreational programs that are being held in the community is an absolute tool that we needed for a long time. So I want to say thank you to the Taibu Board of Directors for their vision. I want to say thank you to Liven and their staff for initiating this project. The Trillium Foundation has done an exceptionally good job uh, in providing funding for projects in our neighborhood to create that village concept that Taibu has in their vision. And the foundation has made available to the organization $324,300 to support the seniors in this neighborhood, to purchase the bus that you're gonna have a chance to see outside. That bus will now do that community work to get you here, get you to your appointments and take you around the community which is absolutely needed. I'm very proud of you guys, and thank you very much for the work you do to continue to build our community very strong. On behalf of the Ontario Trillium Foundation, I have a small presentation to make to Liben and Floyd Eve, if you would both come up here. And called apartheid which separated black people from white. Malice talked about Rosa Parks, who refused to sit at the back of the bus because she was fed up and tired of the way black people were treated. So please listen to this lesson. If it wasn't for them, all of us wouldn't be in the same room together today. So now let's give a round of applause to those who opened the doors for us. <laughs> Thank you. 
Planet Africa Television will be right back. You're watching Planet Africa Television. At the launch of the Ubuntu Village project by Taibo Community Health Center, the Ubuntu shuttle was unveiled. The shuttle will help older adults as well as socially isolated individuals in the community. That's all for the program. It is great to see an organization like Taibo Community Health Center dedicated to addressing unique health and social challenges facing African Canadians. With engaging programs and community participation, Taibo is playing a key role in maintaining good health and harmony. If you'd like to know more about us, please visit our website at planetafricagroup.com. Also join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. See you next time. Goodbye.